Did you know that according to NCAAS data, nearly one in three people don't pass the FE exam on their first try? Now here's the real question. If you had to start from scratch today, would you know exactly how to prepare to be in that passing group? Well, in this episode, I'll be talking about how I would approach the FE exam if I were starting fresh today in 2025, with no recent coursework, no study momentum, just a goal to pass and a plan to make that happen. Whether you're just graduated or it's been a few years and you're dusting off the old cobwebs, this episode is packed with practical, tested strategies that real engineers, just like you, have used to pass the FE exam. I'm your host, Anthony Fasano, and I am excited to bring you this valuable episode of Pass the FE Exam. Let's jump right in. So today I'm going to walk you through two common scenarios and share practical targeted strategies for each one. So you can move forward confidently no matter where you're starting from in your FE exam preparation. Scenario one, if you've been out of school for a while or didn't pass the exam before. Now, if it's been a few years since graduation or if you've taken the FE before and it didn't go your way, first of all, that's not failure. It just means that it's time to switch up the strategy a bit. Here's how I would approach it. Start with a self audit. Which topics gave you the most trouble? Be honest about it. That's your roadmap. Focus on the areas that cost you points last time or just the topics that you generally struggle with. Consider a structured course, but choose carefully. Not all courses are created equal. Ignore the flashy ads and look for options with short digestible video lessons, step-by-step -step problem walkthroughs, a heavy focus on practice over lecture, at least six months of access. You need flexibility, not pressure. A small team of instructors, too many voices equals confusion. Scenario two, the just graduated game plan. If you're within a year or two of graduating, you're in a great spot. You've still got academic momentum and a lot of the material is fresh in your mind. So here's how I'd take advantage of that. Use your old course materials, your class notes, past homework, even your old exams. They can actually be more helpful than bulky review books. They remind you why the formulas work, not just what to plug in. Cross-check everything with the NCWS exam outline. Download the specs for your discipline. This becomes your checklist. Don't waste time studying things that aren't going to show up on the FE exam. Choose one solid practice resource. Don't overwhelm yourself with 10 different platforms. Pick one digital question bank or workbook, something that mimics the actual FE style. Personally, I go for one that's flexible and offers a lot of practice problems organized by topic. Take at least two full-length practice exams. Treat them like the real deal. No distractions, no pauses. This isn't just about content. It's about stamina and time management. You want your brain to recognize the pace and pressure of the real exam. Here's a bonus tip. Reach out before you buy. Send a message to the course creators. See if they respond and answer your questions. Their support now will likely reflect the support that you'll get during the actual course. And finally, don't buy based on influencer hype. Look for testimonials from real engineers, especially ones in your discipline. If you're taking the FE Mechanical, you want to hear from someone who actually passed the FE Mechanical using the course that you're considering. Let's now take a look at what you should avoid when choosing FE prep resources. Let me call out a few things you want to avoid because they can seriously slow down your progress. Overly long lectures. If the content feels like it's a never ending classroom lecture, you're probably going to zone out. Look for study materials that break things down into shorter, more focused chunks. You'll learn better and stay engaged longer. Live only sessions. Unless you're absolutely sure you'll show up to every single live class, skip it. Most people end up missing a few and then feel guilty, and that guilt doesn't help you pass the exam. Go for flexible, on demand options that you can rewatch anytime. Courses that don't actually teach. Some courses just give you problems and answer keys. That's not enough. You need walkthroughs, explanations, and actual teaching. If you're going to spend the money, make sure you're getting more than just a list of solutions. Access limits that create pressure. Some programs cut off your access after 90 days or so. That might sound motivating at first, but it just creates stress. Life happens. You want the ability to review at your own pace without feeling rushed. Here's my final advice. Don't just hope to pass the FE exam. Build yourself a system. Whether you use your own notes, a question bank, a paid course, or a tutor, what matters most is your plan. Do a little bit every day. Take action. Track your weak areas. Get really comfortable with the reference handbook. 
simulate the real exam at least twice. And most importantly, don't repeat study methods that haven't worked for you in the past. Switching strategies isn't failure, it's progress. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will answer more of your FE exam questions and we will run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos regularly. So please be sure to click that subscribe button as you will get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions on a regular basis to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below and I will read and respond to them in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a question that you need answered. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.